For now, let's step back into uh, flood updates and delighted to be able to touch base with a very busy man. Gift of the Givers are once again everywhere to be seen helping out in response to the floods. And I've got their Western Cape coordinator and spokesperson on the line with us now. Ali Sable, I believe you're out in the Makassar area at the moment. Thanks for making time to give us an update. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, correctly, said we are at the moment in Makassar. As I'm speaking to you, I'm just watching our teams. Yeah. Um, the, this, is, this is where the Easter River and the Kills River meet, and the river is overflowing at the moment. And the one bridge that connects the two communities is completely cut off. Yeah. Uh, we managed for the assistance of the fire department who's here and the disaster risk management teams to tie a rope across the one section and to the section on this side. And we are busy pulling in aid uh, across sure. to the people on the other side. There's about uh, 200 people displaced on the other side. It's completely cut off. And this is the only means of getting aid into them. The whole area here is completely flooded. I'm talking about close to 300 families. Our teams were on the ground from this morning in this area, uh, delivering uh, blankets, um, warm clothing, hot meals, uh, toiletry packs, some hygiene packs. Uh, word went out this morning that uh, water coming down from the river is contaminated with the sewage coming from Kadicha and Mitchell's Plain, unfit for the people to drink. So we just put in a truck of bottled water now to hand out to the community members here as well. Uh, this morning we completed, we, our team split into five. Yep. Uh, we, are, we have one team concentrated on the all the informal settlements in the Cape Metropole. We have one team concentrating on the Overberg area, that is your Grabo, Caledon, uh, Potrafir, mm-hmm. and um, Hermanus area. As we know, the Potrafir birth is bank history, taking part away from the N2. Uh, logistically, we will only manage to do Grabo, um uh, as of last night, yep. um, there the, the is um, a, um, a detours happening to go into Kalim Hermanus, and we have a team at the moment going into Lowry's Pass Village and Munzamo in the Strand area as well. So Lowry's Pass Village, I mean, the visuals we've seen coming out of that settlement, Ali, are horrifying. It is absolutely waterlogged, and you speak about using a rope to pull aid across uh, in Makassar. Is it safe for your teams to be working? I mean, is that a... a the only alternative, clearly, to get aid across. But uh, some of these areas still have massive amounts of moving water flowing through them. What do you do with regard to the safety of your own teams? Okay, the streams, as you correctly said, the streams are extremely strong. The water is pushing everything back. Uh, we, uh, we we manage with the assistance with the fire department. Um, the double check is the rope is stable. Uh, we got um, divers um, are standing on the side as well in case anybody falls in. Um, our team members are supplying, uh, we are not going into the middle of the um, river. We have the um, assistance of community divers who are standing in the middle of the river, pulling the rope, make sure that the, the goods go across. So uh, our team safety, um, at, they, they are okay for now. Um, talking about the Lodi's Pass Village, um, as you correctly said, terrible situation there. Schools should not open here today. The local schools completely flooded as well. The only primary school there that takes 1,800 learners sure. completely could not open their doors today. The local clinic could not see the patients today as well. And um, we are just worried about areas that is not accessible yet. I'm talking about the area of like the Dwarves, where the, um, the river burst and uh, taking part of the N1, the N1, N1 is still closed there. The R60 route, Montague, Ashton, Ladysmith, they also in dire need of assistance. Um, but um, this, this operation won't last one or two days. For seeing out, we will probably be busy for the next week or two, getting uh, as roads become accessible for our teams to move in. You've, I mean, that's the, the key thing here, Ali, that for your teams to get to these areas is proving so difficult because of all the diversions in place on those major routes. W- what was your experience yesterday? There were so many holiday makers trying to make their way back into Cape Town at the same time as your teams would have been trying to get out into the affected areas. There was complete snarl up on most of the major routes that were open. Um, you know, h- how much of a frustration was it for you or did people see the gift of the givers logos on trucks and, and let you through? Yes, so all credit due to the um, Western Cape Traffic Department. There was a situation yesterday where we received calls from the Tiervatus Club Municipality informing us that they had evacuated people into community halls, into Caledon and to Grabo. And if there any ways we can be, of, uh, uh, if there any way we could bring assistance to them. The lines were, as you correctly said, going pa- from the Salodis Pass Village, right past the Somerset Mall. There's people standing in the lines and some, I believe some of them stayed there all night, not be able to get through. We then alerted the traffic officials. We are here with humanitarian aid. We, we diverted our trucks driving an oncoming lane to get onto the mountains. We were the only cars allowed onto the mountain at that stage. 
to take aid to the people. And when we got to the war, communities were um, communities were very emotional, you know, because they thought no one was coming to assist them. So we managed to take the people through blankets, mattresses, hot meals, etc. And smaller buckets took it through to Caledon. Uh, that, that mission only lasted about 30 minutes when we were told to leave the area as the rain was coming down heavy and there was more, they were more afraid of more mudslides coming along the Saloli Pass. It's a frightening situation and it's a changing situation, Ali, because I understand that as much as the rain may have stopped falling, certainly in the quantities it was falling over the weekend and Monday, there is still so much water in the system coming down. There's a risk of rivers still coming in flood, of river banks collapsing. Uh, you must have to work very carefully with the safety of your own people in mind. But at the same time, you are reaching out to people who are absolutely desperate for help. Now, you've said over a week's worth of work still lying ahead of you. In terms of supplying your teams with relief, uh, um, relief supplies. Are you collecting donations from the public, or do you have enough in in hand to be able to keep operating for now? It's not, it's not going to be enough. You know, our estimations, what were figures coming through last night from the different municipalities, and our team, and with our team's assessments on the ground, the numbers are looking ten thousand plus easy. So we in dire need of um, blankets, mattresses, toiletries, baby care packs, which is your baby nappies formula. Those can be dropped off at, at our collection points, which is which 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 you can call on 0800 786 911. It's our toll free number. You can call them, and they will give you the points where you can drop off your donations. It just makes it much easier for us if this um, if we if they can drop off their collection point instead of us collecting because logistically we are stretched. Absolutely. Okay, so 0800-786-911. If you give them a call, they'll be able to direct you to your most convenient drop-off point if you'd like to make a contribution. A reminder, there are also Red Cross officers. You can do the same thing. And Ali, as always, thank you so much for um, the help that is given and given so quickly. Uh, you, your, your, your team just has the ability to cut through red tape and get onto the road and out there uh, so quickly. I know it's, it's certainly been done in coordination with other agencies You've mentioned the role of traffic officers. I know the NSRI is out there. We've got a couple of helicopters in the air today. It really seems like um, uh, communities coming together and, and relief organizations helping each other at a time like this. Most definitely. You know, the coordination from the Western Cape Disaster Risk Management Team, the provincial government, who on Sunday informed us that there's going to be devastating rains for us to be on standby. The coordination and, you know, the... Um, and even they are making um, aid accessible as soon as possible to the affected communities. We really appreciate their assistance. The role of the traffic department, the fire brigade, um, all other NGOs, and especially the community members uh, who, who informed us, you know, you don't have to come into this area. We as community leaders will be taking care of the community. And that, that, that's the kind of uh, spirit that these disasters bring up. So it's a positive sign. If there's one positive sign from this disaster, it's a coordination amongst all the different departments. Ali Sable, thank you so much for uh, that update and thank you again for the work that is being done on the ground in very difficult conditions. Ali, the Western Cape coordinator for Gift of the Givers, speaking to us from the ground uh, with the team in Makassar. And just I'm picturing those teams literally pulling aid across a flowing river to get it to the people who need it. Uh, um, it's 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 still a very dire situation out there, make no mistake. And uh, just to emphasize what Ntutuzela said to us earlier, again, the plea remains that if you do not need to be moving around, uh, certainly moving between cities, traversing the major highways, etc., please avoid getting onto those roads if at all possible. Um, it's still a very fluid situation. There are still road closures and flooding. Melissa, thank you for your WhatsApps telling us there's flooding on Baden-Powell Road just before the N2 on the coastal side. Also reports of flooding on the N2 at Spine Road. I saw some footage earlier today of the road between Bredastorp and Filiastorp and it's just water in every direction. It's water, water over the road in some places, certainly water right up to the road along its full length. It's There is a lot that still has to drain away and what is underneath that in terms of the uh, structural integrity of the sides of the roads, etc. Still a big, big question mark.